Hello everyone, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson. Today, we are going to be talking about a particular type of four layer PCB stack up, which has been making the rounds on LinkedIn lately. And that stack up is Signal Ground Power Ground Stack Ups. We're gonna take a look at some of your comments about this stack up, and I'm gonna show you some design examples that show how to use this type of stack up correctly. So let's take a look at what you have to say about this stack up and let's get started. Now we've talked about four layer PCB stack ups on this channel and some other videos, but there's one type of stack up that we haven't mentioned. And this is a stack up with signal, ground, power, and ground, which is a really interesting choice, I think. Normally you would have the ground on the two internal layers, However, in this one, you put ground on the bottom layer and then use the third layer for power, or an alternative is to use it for power and signal. Now, I first came across this while, of course, doing what I do best in my off time, scrolling on LinkedIn. And we had some pretty interesting comments and even some design examples from folks on LinkedIn looking at this particular stack up. We've even gotten some questions coming through the YouTube channel about this type of stack up. Now, one thing I'd like to note about this stack up is that it's actually a variation of signal, ground, power, signal. In both of these, you have ground on the second layer and power on the third layer. What do you do with the bottom layer? Well, it could be signal, could be ground, could be even more power. Let's take a look at what the internet has to say about this and maybe we can get some insight. In this stack up, the author writes, I routed the critical analog signals on L3. So there is a ground plane above and below the analog signals. I know that L2 ground plane is too far from L3, but then of course this is being compensated by putting ground on L4. Here's where we see some questions about the variations of this. ES2258 writes, Hi Zach, what do you think about pouring layer four with ground if we have signal ground power signal? Here are some comments on a LinkedIn post about this type of stack up. Lee Brady writes, I like signal power ground signal. This way you have power routed on polygons, which allows for some decoupling to be formed between the two planes. Artsy Amshotsko writes, well, depending on the application, the usual signal power ground signal might be okay, but with today's fast switching electronics, it is likely to cause EMC issues as signals on layer one and power on layer two, share dielectrics between them and ground on layer three. I think this is hinting at adding ground above that power plane so that you have it on the outer layer. This image shows a design example that was included with one post and you can see the usage of each layer marked in the image. Note the two split ground regions on layer two. Here on layer three, it's dedicated for power, but there are also some signal lines on this layer as well, as you can see from the small traces. What do you do with layer four? Well, of course, if you want to avoid EMC problems with those traces on layer three, you would demand to fill layer four with ground. Clearly there are some differences of opinion on how to use that four layer stack up when you have power on layer three. Some are suggesting you should just fill layer four with ground. Others seem to be suggesting that you can just leave layer four alone even if you have power and signal on layer three. Let's jump onto the board and break this down a little bit and we can see some of the best ways to use that last layer to ensure that you have low noise and can even comply with EMC. So let's break down this type of four layer stack up. So here we have, of course, our SIG and ground layers. And then we have our third and our fourth layers. Normally in this type of board, you would have your components up here on the top layer. And then of course, if any of these components have any, for example, com impedance controlled signals, they have RF, they have other digital signals that you need to route around the board. You can do that on the top layer and then you still have ground nearby to provide a clear reference plane and to control the return current. Let's just suppose for a moment that we do put power down here. Now the question is, when should you put signal down here on the bottom layer or when should you put it in an internal layer? Well, let's just suppose for a moment that we put signals on the bottom layer. When would we wanna do this? I think it's appropriate to do this when we've kept our power layer as a complete layer. So if this is a complete plane layer that we're not splitting up into rails, then we could route signals over that layer. And as long as we include vias between the two signals layers and we connect those vias to ground, then we're gonna be able to provide a clear reference as we make layer transitions from signal on the bottom layer to signal on the top layer. Now, the reason you would wanna use a plane in layer three 
is if we had high current. So if we had high current on the power layer, then it would make sense to use a plane in layer three. Now I've done some power systems like this. You basically have some digital stuff on the top. It's used for monitoring or communication with some other system. And then all of the power is carried on layer three. In this instance, what should you do with this bottom layer? Well, in this instance, I think it's just fine to fill this in with ground. Why do we wanna fill this in with ground? Well, again, when we have this layer transition from top to bottom, if we have those stitching vias that are connected between ground here and ground here, they're gonna provide that clear reference as any signals down here on layer four make their way up here to layer one. So I think that makes perfect sense. Now, the variation on this is instead to have your power traces routed here on layer three, have ground on layer four, and then probably have some additional signals down here on layer three. So you basically have a SIG power on layer three and then complete ground on layer four. So when should you do this? I think this is appropriate in one of the instances that was mentioned in the comments, which is when your signals on layer three are analog signals and they need that extra shielding from ground above and below. I think it's a bad idea to do this if you know that these power rails in layer three are going to be quite noisy. You wouldn't want any of that noise to couple into the analog lines that you might put here on layer three. And especially you wouldn't want to do that if these analog signals are very low level. Another instance where you wouldn't want to do this type of stack up is if you have a bunch of components down here. Imagine for a moment you have a lot of components down here on layer four. All of those components are gonna carve up this ground. And remember, here in this four layer board, you have this layer being thin, and then for symmetry, this layer is also thin. So you're gonna try and have much stronger coupling between signal here on layer three and ground on layer four. Now, if you're carving up this ground in order to make room for components, what's happening? Well, now you're potentially introducing some ground discontinuities. So I think the signal power on layer three is perfectly fine as long as we don't have those components on layer four. So now that we've got some context around this type of stack up, let's take a look at some design examples that show some good candidates for this type of layer arrangement. Now these design examples that I'm gonna show come from some of our one minute design review submissions. Let's hop into Altium Designer and take a look. So what I wanna do now is look at three different designs that could be candidates for using the signal ground power ground type of stack up. First, just jumping in here, we have a design from Nikita Huber. This design uses signal ground ground signal with power mixed in with signal on the top and bottom layer. So just taking a look at this, if we just go into 3D and we turn on all of our layers, we can see what's going on here on the top layer. The top layer has all of the components and you see a decent amount of routing up here on the top layer. And then of course, if I select layer two and just go into single layer mode, you can see that layer two is very clearly uniform ground. Layer three is also uniform ground. What about layer four? Well, here on layer four, we have a lot of rails and we have some trace routing. Now, if I just take this out of single layer mode for a moment and flip this over, what do we see on layer four? We only see a small number of components on this back side. We really only have this Texas Instruments chip and some passives up here in the corner, this connector, and then this very large capacitor right here. I would argue that this would be a good candidate for the signal ground power ground type of stack up. What you could do is move these components up to the top layer. There is some room for it. It wouldn't take that much reconfiguration to do it. And then you could move all of these rails and traces into layer three and then move the complete ground on layer three out to layer four. You could leave this connector here up on the top side. It's really not gonna hurt anything by just staying right there. It's gonna have ground around it. It won't really interfere with any of the signals that are here on layer three. Let's take a look at the clock extractor from Scott Pelletier. So Scott sent in this design as a clock extractor operating at very high speed. And I think this is a good example of a design that could use high speed, but also use a non-traditional stack up if everything is done correctly. Here in 3D, we see, of course, we have a lot of components on the top layer. And then we also have a decent amount of high speed routing here on the top layer as well. Now, if I just take this and flip it over 
What do we see on the back side? Not very much routing and really no components. The only component evidence that we have here is just some of the shrouds here from these connectors coming in off of the edges. You can see here if we just go to single layer mode, if I go to layer two, we have complete ground. And then on layer three, we really don't have much of anything on layer three, right? We just have a few power polygons. This is another one where I would argue you could actually move the stuff on layer four into layer three. And by moving this stuff on layer four into layer three, what you would do is then free up everything on the backside for ground. So that would provide a clear reference for all of these signals here on layer three. And you could then fill in everything else with ground if you need to balance any of the copper based on your fabricator's recommendations. If you did need to balance the internal layers and the bottom side with copper based on your fab house's rules, you would then also want to balance here on the top side with ground fill as well. Of course, if you did that, this is a high speed board. You would want to make sure that these high speed lines coming off of this chip have sufficient clearance to that ground pour. If you don't know how to calculate it, that's okay. There is a very conservative rule you can use. That is a 3W spacing rule around these traces. 3W isn't required, but again, if you don't know how to calculate it exactly, that's okay. Just put in a 3W clearance between these high speed, high frequency traces and the nearby ground, and you'll be okay. You won't introduce any noticeable impedance deviation. Next, let's take a look at this board from Combo Chiganzi. Combo sent this in recently. This is something that we filmed not too long ago. And this is an ESP32 board, so it has both high speed on it as well as RF. Just taking a look through the layers, we see here, of course, L2. We have our ground layer. L3, we have some rails here that are being used to distribute power. And then L4, we have several traces here that are being routed between different components. You can see that some of these are analog inputs. Some of these, like this polygon here, are for power. Now, in this particular board, because you don't have really high power demands for these components, I would argue that layer three doesn't really need these big rails on it. These big rails are mostly being used out of convenience. It's very easy to just put down a rail and then wherever the power pin happens to be, just drop a via, and now you've got a nice, easy connection to that power rail on the internal layer. Now, I would argue that if these analog inputs were receiving too much noise, one thing you could do if you wanted to is you could put these analog signals in layer three, plenty of spacing around them near the nearby power rails, and then fill the bottom side with ground. So that is another good way to use signal, ground, power plus signal, and ground in a four layer stack up. Now, as we continue looking around this bottom layer, we see some other analog signals here. We see what look like some power signals coming off of these headers. And then we see here that we really don't have any digital stuff on this bottom layer, except for these two traces, which I believe are part of a UART interface. Someone correct me in the comments on that if that's incorrect. But I think this goes to show the point. We're not trying to route really high speed stuff from the top layer all the way through the stack up to the bottom layer in this particular type of system. We're really reserving that internal layer for some analog stuff and for some power. I think this is a totally appropriate use of a four layer stack up with power and signal on layer three. And again, you can shield all of that stuff in that internal layer by placing ground on layer four. And finally, once again, just make sure that if you need to balance copper, you do that by doing what Combo has done here, by putting ground with some stitching on the top layer. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. We definitely want to hear from you if you have used this kind of stack up. Make sure to let us know in the comments. As I mentioned in the video, the design examples that I show came from our one minute design review series. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and check out our shorts if you want to learn more about the one minute design reviews. And of course, you can find me on LinkedIn and send me your design and production files if you want to have your design reviewed on the channel. Last but not least, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and of course, don't forget to call your four-layer PCB fabricator, folks.